Well, my first question is coming off of Jurassic Park 3, which was so heavily special effects driven. What was it about Hidalgo, which is about one man and his spiritual journey that appealed to you? Well, that's, that's really it. It's such a simple story. And, and the idea that it's, it's surrounded by all this wonderful landscape and the cast of thousands and these great stunts and a few effects, you know. But um, at the heart of it, it's, just, it's a very simple story. And you know, depending on who you ask, it's a true story. But, um, you know, I, I got sort of stuck in the effects business. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I love visual effects for what they can do to help tell a story, but uh, the first picture I made was this thing called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Sure. I didn't get offered anything but kids' effects films for, you know, probably 10 or 12 years. So I've been looking for a chance to sort of break out of that mold, you know, and October Sky was really what did it for me, and then I went back into Jurassic Park 3 because I had offered to do Jurassic Park 2, <laughs> and when Steven said, hey, how about that sequel? So, you know, it's pretty hard to turn down, but uh, the main thing about Hidalgo is that, is that at the heart of it, it's really a story of this guy trying to find out who he is, you know, and in the midst of this amazing ordeal that he went through. Well, I'd like to follow up on something you brought up about the, the fact that it's based on a true story. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of question now about mm -hmm. who Frank Hopkins was and whether or not everything that he said happened in his right. life, if it actually happened. And right. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on well, that. Well, you know, the, a lot of it is based on the oral traditions of the Lakota. Uh, John Fusco researched uh, this for about 10 or 12 years, I think, before he ever started writing. And he went to some of the reservations, and he started hearing about this guy, Frank Hopkins. And, uh, you know, he went looking for written histories as well as, you know, the oral histories that, that the Lakota were, were telling him about. And mostly what he found was uh, an autobiography that was written by Frank Hopkins himself. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, the, the, the detractors say, well, you know, anybody can write their own life story. But there was so much detail mm -hmm. in this story, and there were so many incidents, like Wounded Knee. You know, he was at Wounded Knee, and uh, if you if you read the, his his um, his account of what happened, it reads as a true document, okay. just because it's so you know it's so filled with it's with these minute details and, and incidents and things that it doesn't sound like the guy's making up something you know just to sort of showcase himself so you know I personally believe it but you know the the point is it's not so much whether it's true or how much of it is true you know it, it it's a film mm -hmm. for one thing and the most important thing you know I can do is to tell the best story I can tell sure. and make it entertaining so that's what I've tried to do and what was it about Vigo that you felt made him so perfect for the role of Frank Hopkins? You know, Vigo has a quality that is pretty hard to describe, but when we were looking for Frank Hopkins, uh, you know, I, I, it's almost like I decided on Vigo when I looked at a black and white 8 by 10 headshot, I said, that's, you know, if I had to describe who Frank Hopkins is, I'd say he looks like this guy. Hmm. There's something about him, you know, plus the fact that he is an expert horseman who's been riding since he was a kid 
you know, and knowing what we had to ask this guy to do, it would have been impossible to to cast someone and then train him to ride a horse. So we had to have somebody who, you know, sort of grown up in the saddle like Vigo did. Um, now the one thing that I noticed is that a big chunk of it is set in Arabia and um, I was wondering what efforts were taken to preserve that fidelity to the Arabian world? Uh, well again, John Fusco uh, did a lot of research, you know, and um, and I think he he really tried to get as many things absolutely accurate as he could, all the details in the story. You know, maybe you would know more than more than I would, you know, if there's any inaccuracies in there. Um, um, and I haven't heard that there are, but you know, we we try to be as as fair and as you know well-rounded and and to and to present all the characters, all the Arabian characters, as uh, you know. We didn't try to shade them in any particular way. We wanted to it to be a sort of fair and balanced. Uh, hope we don't get sued for saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we wanted to treat them like we would any other characters. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. Is that it? Okay. I had so much more to say. <laughs>